but I think there is a more important thing, the reward of excellence is, I don't think it's excellence. I think it's what you have to become to achieve excellence in the first place, right? It requires a different kind of a person for us to become, for us to be able to gain excellence at what we do, right? And uh, you know, it's excellence is like, you know, there's, a, there's, there's a cartoon, where the, the shark is saying to his son, you know, son, being a shark requires a 24 by 7 by 365 commitment. You always have to be a shark all day long, right? So being excellent is not a one time or the other thing. Typically, what I have seen is people who are excellent at one thing, who have cultivated a habit of excellence in one thing, typically tend to be excellent at multiple things they do, that they set their mind to. Because it's a culture, it's a habit that comes about where at every point, at everything you do, you just want to make sure that you do a good job, not for others, but for yourself, because before your name goes on, the quality goes in, as, as, as the saying says, it's because it's just the way you are. Right? And ultimately, we believe that, you know, the same refrain of it's a process and it's not an outcome is there, it's been referred by multiple people. You know, there's no beginning and there's no end, you know, there's just this infinite passion for life. That goes. And uh, typically, you know, this sometimes, you know, when a lot of us in various things that we see, whether in companies or in individual life, you know, we find a lot of problems, you know, day in and day out. I wake up every morning and there are a whole bunch of problems, right? But as long as you have the time and you have the patience, I think the all human power comes from the compound of time and patience to be able to achieve in that. So, in terms of engineering excellence, you know, how, how does one engineer excellence in organizations? These rules that we have found out may not apply to all, may not apply in many situations, but in general, we think they transcend place and space, space and time, right? I think one thing is, it is inevitable that as leaders, you know, they cast long shadows in organizations, as they say, you know, you're very influential, whether you like it or not, people are observing you all the time, they're taking cues from you in terms of what you believe is important. They take, they get inspired by you, by in terms of what you do and what you don't do. That's a fact, right? But there is a danger in being this all-pervasive force, all-pervasive, you know, this driver of this organization. If you, if you set out to be that, I think this organizations have very limited ability to grow uh, as, as companies because uh, if you do that, then you become the growth actually bottleneck for the company overall. So they say, I go back 2000 years to a quote from a, ch a Chinese philosopher who said, you know, the best leader is one whose presence is not known, right? The next is one who is loved, the second is one who is feared. And the worst is really the one who is despised by the organization side. So the key here is, I mean, how can one, a leader who casts a long shadow, how can his presence not be known? I mean, what sense does it make? It makes sense because you have created an environment, you have recruited the right kind of people, it's not always easy, where they perform, they gain excellence, and they are motivated enough, they are empowered enough, not because they do things, not because they are trying to impress you, not because they are afraid of you, but because they find empowerment and joy and satisfaction in their own right. When you create that an environment, I think you get to an organization that is in generally happy and achieving organization overall, right? And for that, you got to create a culture where you don't put yourself out to be this ultimate position of authority, right? Where you are one among them, as the previous speaker has said, you know, you are, you are along with everybody trying to create the culture and trying to create this one. Right? And the most important thing, I think, you know, oftentimes, uh, perhaps we in India are more guilty than others, you know, we tend to create organizations that are, that march to our orders, to our instructions, right? And oftentimes, I think that's perhaps a huge mistake of this inflexibility of organizations to evolve because everything depends upon you, right? So I think the best thing that we can do as organizations is to really get people 
who are independent thinkers. But there's a problem with in independent thinkers is they don't listen to you all the time, right? Is you got to cajole, you got to argue, you got to reason out. You can never issue an edict. I want this done because I am saying so. You can't do it, right? Because they don't follow orders, right? But those are the kind of people who will, who will gather force for the organization and to grow from that, right? And how do you find these people? I think in our experience, you look for five eyes. One is, you first thing you look for is intellect, right? This hunger to learn, this curiosity to acquire knowledge and the ability to get better. Because as I was saying to somebody else, the empires of the future are just empires of the mind, right? The moment you, you find a guy who listens to uh, muse, stupid music on iPod and read a nice book, just move on, right? Because you have to read, right? You have to learn, constantly learn, and that's the first thing. Second thing is look for people who, are, who have got a proclivity for action, people who want to get things done, do things even before you ask them to. Third, no substitute, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you are a neurosurgeon or whether you are a CEO, it doesn't matter who you are, right? That hard work and the capacity for hard work, sustained, focused work is key. Fourth, in integrity, simple rule, the guy does the same thing, whether you are looking, anybody is looking or is not looking, that's integrity, right? And finally, the interpersonal skills, the ability to pull together teams of people and make them do, because over time, your individual contribution becomes less important than the contribution of the people who you have assembled under you. That becomes your crowning achievement, right? And in organizations, anywhere else, anywhere you go in the world, people look for three things and three four letter words, right? They are work, love and hope, which is one, is they are doing something that will make them better people, better professionals, and they enjoy the work they're doing because it is enriching. Second, they look for environments where they feel appreciated for the contributions they make, they feel loud for the value they add, and they feel good about themselves. And finally, this is very important, is that they believe they're part of a team that is going to win. This part of a team for whom the future is going to be better, tomorrow is going to be better than it is today. Right. Three things that people look. It doesn't matter where you go. Right. And your job as, a, as you grow, uh, as we all go along, our job as managers is not to make people under us comfortable. That's a mistake. Right. I think we have to make sure they are uncomfortable all the time. That is, you push them into zones of discomfort, not through harshness, but with a lot of love. Right. And the zones of discomfort is you're always pushing them to do better things, bigger things, more challenging things, audacious things, great things, right? And interestingly, they will thank you for it at the end of the day because they'll say, from him I learned or from her I learned things, right? And eight planks of excellence in our things, um, obsession with and a culture of excellence, wanting to do a truly good job is a culture, is a habit. Second, what is important? Do you want excellence or do you want speed? If anybody asks you the question, you just say yes. I need both. And they are not mutually exclusive to a lot of cases, right? Speed and excellence sometimes are correlated. And somebody else will ask you, what is important? Do you want innovation or do you want excellence? The answer is yes, I want both. Right? You can achieve both. Knowing what we want to be excellent at as organizations, that's great. Because strategy both for individuals and for organizations is not about inclusion, but about exclusion. What you choose not to do is more important than what you choose to do. Say, I am going to be good at this, right? right. Focus on process and quantify outcome expectations. Others have said the same thing, right? What gets measured gets managed. If you want something is important to you, you quantify what it is that you want and you'll get it. Because if you don't measure it, you don't know what is success, you don't know what is failure. Sometimes knowing what success and failure are is, is far, far better than not knowing what they are. Third, teaming, ability to bring multiple thoughts together, investment into the thing, training and recognition of excellence 
in the organization is what inspires people to say, hey, if I'm good at something, I will be recognized, and recognition is always good. And finally, evolution to prepare for changing definition. What is excellent today may not be excellent tomorrow. And one has to be ready to be able to change this excellence, right? 